Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, so today I'm taking a look at NECA's second release from Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, and that is not Jason Voorhees, it's Roy Burns. Let's check it out. Now I say the second release because the first ultimate release from Friday the 13th Part 5 was the dream sequence Jason as you see right here. And if you guys have seen that video or if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link right above so you can check that out. But what I like about this new one is they actually use the poster art, the movie poster art for this one as opposed to this right here. So as you can already tell, I'm in love with this art on the front of this ultimate box. I used to have this poster as a kid and I am absolutely loving it. So turn to the side, we have a really cool product photo of Roy Burns as Jason Voorhees. Other side, same deal. And then we turn it to the back and we can see some of the scenarios we can put Roy Burns in. You can see the road flare there, um, his machete. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later with his accessories, but yeah. There's blood on his machete. Roy Burns with his mask off and one of the best kills in the movie, hedge clippers right there. So flip it around to the front, open the flap. Awesome product shot of Roy Burns and there he is in the box. And he actually has a lot of killing weapons in this set. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure, every single kill he has in a movie, every weapon that he used is represented here. So this is awesome, so let's take him out. All right, here he is, Roy Burns, out of the box, but let's start with the backdrop and a pretty basic backdrop here. I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Um, actually, I have no idea what this is supposed to be, so I'm just gonna put this off to the side. And let's get to Roy himself. So this was probably one of my most anticipated, if not um, most anticipated figures that NECA was releasing this year. This guy is absolutely awesome. And when I heard they're releasing a Roy Burns from part five, I knew I had to grab him right away. So you can see he's wearing the Jason mask, but it has the blue Chevron symbols instead of the red which makes it stand out. You can always tell, you see that blue, you know it's Roy Burns. And you turn it around to the side and it looks like he's kind of wearing, it has kind of a, uh, what's that character from the Flintstones with the big head? Um, I forgot his name, but that's what he reminds me of. He looks like he has a giant helmet on right here, but that's just his skull cap that he's wearing. Um, it looks kind of weird from the back, but from the front, he looks amazing. Now he's made of all hard plastic on his coveralls here. You can see there's not much really to him. Um, just a one piece coverall suit, just like he was wearing in the movie. Um, you can see right here, he has a wound, a gash wound right here that they do put. It's actually pretty nicely detailed. But you can see, if you can see here, it's kind of soft, but everything else on him is hard molded plastic. So that's kind of weird. It's all hard molded, but then right here, have a little soft area. And take a look at his hands here. This is his open hand on his left arm. And then on his right arm here, he has a grasping hand where he can hold one of his many weapons. Um, he does have an extra hand, but I'll get to that when we talk about the accessories. Let's go down to his boots. The boots are actually really nicely molded. Check these out. Everything about this looks great. Even though it's hard molded plastic, it looks like it's real cloth that he's wearing, like a real suit. Pretty cool. On the bottom of his feet, we have the peg holes, but I'm not having any problem standing him up at all. So I don't think anyone's actually gonna need the stands uh, to help hold him up, but it's still nice that they give you the peg holes. So let's take a look at Jason's mask a little further so we can take it off pretty easy. And there's a nice look of Roy Burns without his mask and that goofy, a uh, bald cap that he had to wear in the movie to make himself look like Jason. But like I said before, <laughs> it just looks so weird from the back. That's fantastic. But there you go. So very cool. Very good likeness of Roy Burns from Friday the 13th part five. I love it. Here's the mask. And yeah, it's Jason's mask. All right, actually I wanted to do a uh, my favorite 
Jason Hockey Masks video, um, but a NECA version. So I was just gonna grab all the NECA hockey masks and rate them based on my favorite. Cause I don't have all the masks in real life, but I have all the masks in NECA ultimate form. So this one's right up there. This one actually looks really nice. Then you can see this very, very soft strap right there. Then it has some silver on the side. Look at that. Um, I don't remember that from the movie, but I'm sure it's there. All right, so now let's talk about articulation. So let's start at the head. So looks like it's on a ball joint. We have the standard up. Oh, let me just take that off. Let's take that off. So up, down, we can look left or right and we can give ourselves a nice 360. So let's go to his shoulders. So let's see how much of an extension we have. Not bad. Without trying to crank it too much, we can put his shoulders out to about right there. And then up, down, swivel, standard stuff. And then we go to his elbows and it looks like we do have a double jointed elbow there. I always love when they give us double jointed elbows. And then his hand, let's see, what can we do with his hand? So we can twist it, but I'm not getting much of an up and down movement with his hands here. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see right there we can move up and down. I just, I just had in a weird direction, that's all. So let's put that back on, there we go. And then other side, I'm sure it's the same deal. We just gotta find that hinge there. So we have absolutely zero articulation with his waist. There is no ball joint in his waist or his upper torso. You can see it's just one molded piece. So let's go down to his legs. So can we do a split? We actually can, that's pretty nice. We have that kind of deal going on where they are connected. So if we move one, we're kind of moving the other leg. Um, that's okay. So up, back, a uh, little bit of rotation here. I don't think I can spin it all the way around. But then we go to his knees. It is just a single hinge in his knees. It's not double jointed. And then let's check out his feet. We have some pretty good downward extension. Like most of them because of the pants that are hard molded. Not much going up. There is a nice ankle rocker here. And we can spin them all the way around. Now part five gets a lot of hate. Uh, from Friday the 13th fanboys. Why? Because it's not really Jason Voorhees doing the killing. Um, but I'm not one of those guys. I think part five is one of the stronger sequels to the original. And that's just because the cool kills that are in that movie, these accessories are going to represent that. So let's start out with the small spike here. It's like just a small railroad spike that he uses as one of his weapons in the movie. Not much to this, but that comes with this set. Number two, let's actually go to his hand. Here's his second hand. I'm guessing, yep, that's his right hand. What, let's see. Nope, that's gonna be a second, yeah, his second left hand where he can actually hold more weapons instead of his open hand. Three, a very long spike, kind of like a spear. It's not exactly a spear, it's just a spike. Here's that sharpened end and nothing on this end. But, um, Painted very, it looks more of a metallic silver. At least it's not like a flat silver, but there is no wear at all on this thing. So let's move on. All right, so next, the road flare, and they made it look like it's burning. Definitely one of the more inventive kills in the movie. Next, we have the classic cleaver. But this is what I want to talk about. This does not suffer from the NECA disease, as I like to call it, because they loaded some of these weapons with a bunch of gore and blood. Check that out. I'm so happy that they did this with this set. As you know, I don't like NECA releasing these slashers from our favorite horror films from back in the 80s with just plain silver looking, not worn, not bloodied up weapons. These guys, this is what they do. They use these weapons to kill people in the movies, so let's see that and represent that. And they did not disappoint. Next, we have the dagger. As you can see, there's some blood on there, and it's making me very happy. But check out the handle. The handle is very detailed. Looks like a lot of the, uh, the wood grain kind of comes through. It looks like it's just handmade. This is awesome. Next the classic Jason Voorhees machete. And once again, there we go, loaded with blood and they did not hold back on this. <laughs> Look at that. 
That looks fantastic. I am loving this. And I saved the best two for last. So one of my favorite kills from that movie is the hedge clippers. And look, they do actually articulate. So this is awesome in there where the girl gets it right in the eyes, right across the eyes there. That's where he goes, bam. But they did not hold back on this one either. Loaded it with blood and I love how they made this a working hedge clipper. This is fantastic. And one of the best accessories that they gave us right here is this garrotte. So they gave us the leather strap and the tree branch where he uses to wrap around the tree. See if I can do it. <laughs> He wraps it around the tree, puts the branch through it. Come on. Boom, okay, great. Oh, well, it looks like it won't fit all the way down, but then he just twists with this. And you know the result after that. But I wish they made these a little bit bigger or they made these little stumps on this piece of uh, this branch smaller because look, I can't go past this point. Oh, there we go. If I push it a little harder. Ah, right there, it gets stuck too. Come on. Okay, well there we go. I just had to use the other side, so there we go, that's great. I mean, so far I'm thinking he's one of my favorite Jason Voorhees from the Ultimate series that they've ever released. Um, even though he's not Jason Voorhees, he's uh, Roy Burns in disguise, but man, with these weapons and the mask and Everything about him, he is just one of my favorite releases from the Friday the 13th series that NECA has ever done. Um, one thing I do wish they did, and it kind of makes me sad that they didn't, because if you look on the back here, you see his ambulance, right? Let me get the light out of there. So you see his ambulance here, and I really wish they gave us a second Roy Burns with the ambulance. So just give us one big box set give us Roy Burns as Jason, give us Roy Burns as the ambulance driver, and then give us the actual ambulance. How badass would that have been? And it would have been in that old style ambulance right there as you saw in the movie and you see right there. So um, fingers crossed that NECA actually gives us a second version to Roy Burns as the ambulance driver with that ambulance. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think of NECA's new ultimate release of Roy Burns from Friday the 13th Part 5? You guys know my thoughts. He's actually one of my favorite Friday the 13th, ultimate Friday the 13th releases that they have ever done. I think he's great. If you guys don't have this already, definitely pick him up. Um, NECA lost the license for Friday the 13th, so we're not going to see anymore for a long time. I do have one more to do, and that is, oh, not that one. Jason from Freddy vs. Jason. So I'll be recording that one directly after I get done with this and I'll release this one next week. But you're not gonna see any more of these for a long time until they get that license back. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go!